Hey guys, I'm gonna be finally reviewing Doom Eternal. I've been planning to make this video for a little while now. Took some notes here, so it's a little bit more, a little bit better constructed. Uh, I'm gonna try make my videos a little bit better. I mean, I don't really um have this as a job. This is more of a hobby. Uh, if it becomes a job, that would be amazing. But um, so anyway, Doom Eternal. In order to start off with Doom Eternal, you have to talk about the amazing gameplay. The gameplay, like, you think Doom 2016 is good. It, it makes Doom 2016 look like Resident Evil 6. Like, um, this game is just a billion times better. And it's like comparing um, The Last of Us to, I don't know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's over really Halo. It's like Last of Us, in my opinion, is a billion times better than Halo. But that just shows you how good The Last of Us is. So anyway, I think what this game improves on the most, I don't know why I was doing a Trump thing there. This game improves on the glory kills, in my opinion. Um, uh, basically, um, uh, with the um, Predator Blade thingy, it, there's just so many creative things where it's like you're slashing them like that, you're chopping off their heads punching their heads into their chest, you're ripping, well you do it in the first game, but you rip out the Mancubus's heart and put them in, in its mouth, the Arachnotrons, just um, stabby, 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 basically. Uh, the Doom Hunters, I love the Doom Hunter one where you just shing, shing, and they just split their faces in half. I went through the game on a uh, Hurt Me Plenty. The difficulty was almost perfect. Uh, mission design. Now, the game... First off, the arenas are designed perfectly, except for one, which we'll get onto later. Um, uh, you might be wondering which one that is. Um, uh, but considering how good this game looks, like the game's beautiful. Um, considering how much better it lo looks in Doom 2016, because Doom 2016, the levels just look bland and boring. In Doom Eternal, you go to um, Fallen Denier, you go to Mars, you go to space, you go to Earth, and every mission looks different. You go to Heaven. One thing before I move on, so when games about hell, right, um, uh, when the war against video games, the whole war against video games, right, people make video games with hell in it, and that's bad because we're seeing demon imagery, even though we're killing the demons, but when we single-handedly invade heaven, no one bats an eye. Anyway, <laughs> better weapons in Doom 2016, it's the same weapons like the plasma rifle, but they've just... The designs look so much cooler, and in my opinion, they're a lot more fun to use, and they have much better mods. Um, uh, but so now we know the weapons are good, and towards the end, you get the crucible, and I did not unlock the unmaker, sadly. Um, uh, but the crucible, oh, the final boss, that was my best friend. Now we move on to the story. Now. Um, leading up to Doom Eternal, I knew it would have a heavy emphasis on the story. So I actually watched quite a lot of lore videos. If you watch uh, Midnight, he does a lot of Doom videos. Pretty good, actually. Um, they talked a lot about the lore. So going into this story, I actually knew who these characters were. Um, uh, so as someone who actually knew about it, I actually enjoyed the story quite a bit. And I think the cutscenes were pretty cool. Because they're really short. They're not too long, so it still feels like a Doom game, because it's not like the story's in your face. Like, gameplay is still the number one priority. And because I actually knew the characters were, I dug it. But, if you don't know about the lore, I can see why people don't like the story. So, now we've talked about the story, and what I love is the humour in the game. Um, uh, I really love the, um, the Doom sense of humour, like, um, uh, you're showing how badass Doom Slayer is, like, one of my favourite moments is, um, uh, you can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars, objective, shoot a hole into the surface of Mars, is, that is just, whoever thought of that, you're a genius, what game can you shoot a hole into the surface of Mars with a gun that's literally called the big fucking gun, what other game can you do that? And now, Gonna move on, I've already talked about mods. The enemies, the enemies are much better. Um, uh, like they've been given new designs, they're much more aggressive. 
Again, I went through Unhurt Me Plenty, because I don't like to play really difficult games. Um, uh, the enemies I found the most annoying were the Whiplashes, um, and probably the Carcasses. Those shields are a lot more annoying than you'd think. And I love the Dread Knights. The Dread Knights look so cool. Um, one thing, I'm going to get onto the Marauders. I don't love the Marauders, but I don't hate the Marauders. Like, the first encounter was good. But as he started to show up in the game, he wasn't difficult. But, um, he was just boring. To be honest, he was just boring to fight. Because you wipe out all the other, other enemies, you're always on the move. Okay, now it's the Marauders. Stay mid-range, wait for him to flash green. Poof. Okay, wait for him to mid-range again, and flash green. Poof. And it was just kind of boring, if I'm being honest. And then um, I'm going to talk about, there's this one arena where I thought the difficulty is a little unfair because of the um, design of it. On Erdak, the second last mission where you have to align the portals before you fight the Khan Maker. Um, uh, basically, um, there's this one arena where there's that big cyber demon guy, there's like one Mancubus, two armoured Mancubuses, and a bunch of tanky enemies. And the arena was so small, so I died a bunch of times at that part, and it honestly felt a little unfair. Um, uh, now, I'm going to talk about um, the boss battles. Um, uh, so we got the Doom Hunter to start off with. These bosses are amazing. What I wanted going into the game were either more bosses than Doom 2016, which we got, or the same amount of bosses, but they had to be much better. Well, we got more bosses than Doom 2016, and in my opinion, they are much better. My favourite boss was the um, uh, Gladiator. Um, I love both of his phases. Um, I keep on getting a uh, low power mode um, uh, during when I'm shooting my videos. And I need to make sure my phone's fully charged. Um, uh, I love the Gladiator boss. Um, uh, the Doom Hunter is a great first fight. I find the Doom Hunter is more difficult than the Marauders. Like whenever a Marauder, Marauder showed up, I was like, uh, this is gonna be boring. When a Doom Hunter showed up, I was like, fuck. But, um, uh, the boss I had the most trouble with was the Khan Maker, because that fucking floor is lava stuff. Then the Icon of Sin is one of the best final bosses I've ever fought. But the thing is, though, um, like, people had trouble with the Khan Maker and the Icon and the Gladiator. I had trouble with the Doom Hunters more than I had with the Gladiator and the Icon. I don't know. Um, uh, but the boss battles, just absolutely fantastic. Top it all off, the soundtrack. Now I'm recording it, this, at a time where the news has come out and Mick Gordon won't be doing any more music. That actually makes me pretty upset. But, um, uh, maybe we'll have like a Sony Marvel thing where Mick Gordon will actually decide to come back. I haven't been following the drama, all I know is that he's not making music for them. Um, uh, but yeah, it makes me sad. Please come back, Mick. Um, the next Doom game won't be the same. So anyway, that's my Doom Eternal review. Thank you guys for, so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Average Movie Gore. Stay safe, stay indoors. Don't be like those idiots saying that it's a fake virus or I don't need a face mask, I've got God. Shut the 